Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ferris Makes Demos. Uh, this is episode 30, which is actually really cool. <laughs> um, it's always surprising when you reach a number that's like, like 30. It's like, oh, I've done 30 of these. This is nice. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I'm working on a new sequencer for our demo tool. And <clears throat> before I sort of get into it, I'm going to be straight here. I have a crash bug and I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> so this will be a little a little bit odd in the beginning here, but I don't really mind. This is gonna be pretty similar to the last couple weeks of streams where I'm just gonna start working on stuff uh, and not worry too much about necessarily explaining everything. Just this is the stuff I wanna work on anyway. So let's go ahead and stream it. By the way, howdy guys in the chat. Local host are Dark Second, Zock War, John Hunter, Evil Ack, Wister Tube, Pyro ESP. How's it going guys? Yeah, I gotta be honest, I just ate a bacon cheeseburger, and that was the fastest I've ever eaten a cheeseburger. And on one hand, it's like a new personal record, and I've been doing a lot of Rubik's Cubes this weekend. So, uh, doing something quicker sounds like it'd be nice. But eating a double cheeseburger as fast as you can is actually really sad. <laughs> it's not the most fun experience. <laughs> well, guys, I'll probably have a little bit of a smaller font size this time, just because I'll be touching some larger bits of code. Also, before I dive in super deep, hey, that looks some text. Um, I did a couple changes to the demo tool already in preparation for this. Mainly, what I did is I made it uh, so that these windows actually dock now, so we can like pull out the profiler, put it over there, which looks really dumb, <laughs> or pull out the operators, for example. Get this little tab view. Mainly just to be able to sort of move these things around. And in particular, because I'm adding a sequencer, this is gonna be quite useful. So that's sort of the first the first thing I did. I made some other small changes to the look. Also, this is kind of nice. Menu options to hide this stuff. Cute makes this stuff really easy, by the way. Probably why I thought about it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Ferris Eats Burgers. I've done Ferris Eats Burritos. <clears throat> By the way, another thing that I'm, I'm trying out today um, is I'm also streaming on the... Hey, sir, click a lot. I'm also streaming on the game development community. Now, technically, what I'm working on is demo scene related and not directly game dev related, but I think I think there's a lot of technical overlap here, so I think that'll be okay. If it bugs someone, just yell at me or whatever. We'll see what we can do. Anyway, so I added the sequencer, and for some reason, I'm getting crash bugs sometimes on startup, and I don't know why that is. Uh, even when the sequencer is just empty and not drawing anything. By the way, the what what is the sequencer is probably a question I should answer before I dive too too deep. Uh, the sequencer is going to be basically what we're going to replace Rocket with. So currently we're using Rocket to do sync, um, just change values over time. This works pretty well, uh, but has some some quirks that I'm not particularly fond of right now, and just doesn't it doesn't really work in the way that I would hope that it would. Like I kind of want something more Premiere like in terms of a timeline uh, that I can interact with, and also have the all of the sync data be part of the project file, which right now it ends up being a separate file due to the separate editor. Um, and these things make it a little bit annoying to, to just build little small, like scenes in isolation. Um, and yeah, something I wanted to fix. I mean, even when doing this tool initially, I always wanted our own sequencer. Um, and I knew it was just a matter of time, but picking rocket was a pretty pragmatic choice. And I think it was a good choice because we got two demos out with it. So that's pretty nice. Actually, th actually three of them. So it's pretty cool. Ah, Rocket's Rocket. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like Rocket. It's just um, the kind of the kind of sequencing that I always wanted to do. Um, it was never really the perfect editor for that. Um, it's just a good enough editor for that case. So we're just kind of outgrowing, or rather, 
moving more towards my original vision, which is pretty different from Rocket. So about time to get rid of it. <clears throat> but for some reason, all I've done here is added the sequencer with the scroll area and stuff. Same way I'm doing with the operator editor. And I set some stuff in the constructor. And I'm not doing anything else. These, there's these functions down here, but they're not even called. And somehow, <clears throat> somehow, I'm getting a crash bug, and I don't know what it is right now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I haven't tried the, the Blender one. I'm using Premiere as a model just because I have some experience with video editing, and that's about it. <laughs> but I really liked the sequencer in Premiere, so... Um, going to copy a lot of aspects from it. Not everything. Um, there are certain things that, certain ways of working with it that I just don't think we need to cover um, because we are going to be doing essentially just clips. Uh, so for example, let me do, uh, let me do a quick mock-up here of more or less what I'm thinking. So here's the editor. And I'm thinking, first of all, we're going to have the, oh, change the color here. We're going to have like a top area here with a bunch of little ticks to show you where you are on the timeline. Going to have a big old scrubber here to move around. Uh, I also want like a transport up here with like play, stop, whatever buttons. That'll probably be up here and then this will be moved down. Um, and then here we're going to have a bunch of tracks. And the tracks are just going to be sort of lanes that we can place clips on. And the clip is going to be just a block like this. That we can move around. Maybe it has a name. I'm not sure about that yet. Like Bob or Jim. And then what I want to do is have a separate view. Uh, for example, to the right here. Uh, I'll use this area so it's not in the way of my face. Uh, and then here, I want to just have like a grid. And then this is where our curves will be placed. So I'll have some, some points and some curves. And the curve will also be tied to uh, to a value somehow. And I'm not entirely sure how I want to present that yet. But this will be something like uh, fade. That's basically all I'm thinking. <clears throat> so I thought about maybe trying to make these nestable. Um, I think I'm not going to do that, at least for the first iteration. Because I don't, I don't like nesting. It will be nice when I start doing things like, oh, I'll put like all the scene ones in this one box, and then start like time stretching and doing those edits. But I can do a lot of that stuff just with the, with them on the timeline too. And I want to see how it scales before I uh, make it nestable. But I think it'll be relatively straightforward, to be honest. Um, there'll be a lot of work. Uh, like I won't finish this today by any means. Um, but that's that's more or less what I'm thinking at the moment. And I'm sure the design will, will change subtly while working on it as well. So kind of just going head first and seeing what we run into. But yeah, this crash bug's a bit weird. Um, I am getting seg faults, so it's a memory access violation somewhere. And it does only happen sometimes. What it seemed to me, though... <clears throat> it seemed to start happening here when I introduced this state variable. I'm not really sure why either, because I have uh, in the operator editor, which is the view that shows the different, the grid with the operators, it's built the same way. <coughs> Has its own state, even sets the same stuff here. So I'm really not sure what that could be at the moment. It's even overriding the same events. In fact, it's just a subset of them. So I'm not entirely sure what is going on here yet. But I guess I'll figure it out. So all I've done so far, by the way, did make a bit of progress here uh, before I realized there was a bug. And that's just this. So the sequencer currently just has these ticks here. 
uh, which will show sort of where in time you are. And then I can scrub the, the scrubber here only when I, uh, excuse me, click and drag in this area. Things that I haven't done so far is zooming. I know I need to be able to zoom, um, which, which I'm actually going to do probably next. Um, and the reason for that, <clears throat> the reason for that is that, um, like there's going to be a lot of interaction logic and stuff like selection, and it's all going to need to translate between sort of the pixel space that we we're displaying here or the point space into, um, into the space where X is time. Uh, so we're going to be using those a lot. And I think doing zoom early on will help us catch logical errors sooner rather than later. Jungle Trevor, um, I have thought about triggers. Um, right now, what I'm thinking is that uh, since we have these subroutines, that I could have one on there that would call a subroutine. Um, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure if we need that because so far, at least in the demos we've done, it wouldn't have been very useful. So I'm not entirely sure what I want to do for that um, or if I want that feature at the moment. So I've thought a little bit about it, but... Yeah, currently I'm using um, S MSVC. I should actually be able to debug this with the Visual Studio debugger. Although I'm not entirely sure if I'm generating all of the necessary debug files. Um, might be. I guess it's worth just trying in there at some point. Because I kind of want to get that nailed down before I move on. Um, That's not happening, which is a little disturbing. <laughs> so I actually wonder if it was some weird build order thing where the sequencer was calling or it was calling an outdated sequencer constructor or something that didn't set the initial values for this. I don't know. Some zombie thing. <laughs> but none of the symptoms are showing up now. It's a bit weird. And if I don't have to look into it on the stream, kind of don't want to. I just know it would be better if we did this sooner rather than later. Apparently, I got to re-enter my Visual Studio credential stuff. <clears throat> Ugh. So I think it's actually rare that I start a new process um, with Visual Studio that's not a Visual Studio project, so much so that I have no idea how to do this. <laughs> I've done it with the performance and diagnostic stuff. That's not what I'm looking for at the moment. So I don't know if MSVC is going to have what we need in terms of sanitizers, but it will definitely have what we need in terms of being able to, a, to have a debugger and look at debug symbols. So it should be helpful, I'd imagine. I'm just going to start. Let me see. Googling this really quick. File open project. OK. So I can just go to the executable here, looks like. Um, editor, targets, editor. 
I should just be able to debug that then. Okay, it didn't have any debug symbols. <laughs> it already broke. I think I know why too. Let me see if I can get this. It's gonna be, uh, where's, change the working directory. I want this and then Environment should be fine. Or sorry, the arguments. Although I should be able to do. <clears throat> if we get anything useful for this. Cause at least and X, X code zero. So at least it's this, if it does crash, we should be able to see where it is. I don't know if it'll be very useful without debug symbols, but it might still give us like a method name and some kind of call stack. Be weird if the entire binary didn't have any, any such symbols, but now it's not breaking. I'm actually suspecting stale build information. Because after I changed the main window source, it seems to be fine now. And I've had some issues like that before. All right, I'm gonna let it be for now. Uh, we're gonna forget about it. So I think, I think this will be all right. So yeah, so that's all I've done so far is the tick thing. I also wanna do a little triangle at the top of the scrubber just because <laughs> that stuff feels nice. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Now I don't, I've never actually drawn polygons with cute before. Looks like I can do a path. New move to, line to, line to, line to, and then fill path. That'd be good enough. <clears throat> so we'll do. Move to the top of this. For example, the here. Let's see. A lot of doing this kind of UI stuff is really boring stuff like this. But that's fine. It wants, wants reels and stuff. That's probably fine. Ignore my horrible constants.
It looks really dumb, but that worked. <laughs> That's funny. This keyboard I'm using this is a Corsair K80 RGB something. Something like that. <clears throat> Cherry reds. So we're going to do it like this. And I think I'm just going to edit the, the line here. Oops. Should be good. That looks okay. This up a little. Some of the stuff I just tend to hard code when doing UI code. Because it's it's all localized so much that it's not really gonna become too messy. Now they don't quite connect actually. Like one pixel off. So I'll fix that. I don't think I'll have the triangle chain size. I just get kind of weirdly fat. <laughs> but uh, but what I'll do is I'll the the ticks will be the indicator. Those will yeah, move out and in and they're going to also um change what scale of time they increment by depending on the zoom. Um, let's do minus one should be enough epsilon for that. But yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. <coughs> and this should cover the entire control here. Now, currently, the actual time that this is editing is also not part of the model. Um, architecturally, there's the Rust part of the project, uh, which I call the editor context, or the domain model. There's a couple different names, um, and that houses all of the all of the data in here, um, all this all the runtime state that this is actually drawing with, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then this currently is just editing a field on the class, so it's. Um, yeah, I wanted to get the interaction logic first before stuffing that down into the um, into the actual context because there's a bit of work to do that since uh, there is a C boundary and I kind of have to add things all the way down there. Of course, this won't take as much stuff as it normally does when making those kind of changes because this is just scrubbing, which won't affect like under redo. Um, I would actually like this to be serialized at some point, but I'll worry about that later. Um, it's not necessary. And yeah, I think I think that works. So yeah, so I would like to do some kind of zooming now, I think. Um, another thing I would like to do pretty quick here is a transport. And I'm probably also gonna hack this so that this time actually controls the demo fairly early on so that I can actually use that um, as a test case. Because I also wanna have loop points. Um, Although I'm not sure how I want those to work yet. So we'll figure that out. 
Also, local hunter said, uh, why do DAWs are DAW selection oriented, video video or, uh, editor scrubber oriented? I have no idea why that is. But I, t I, I actually think I would prefer the video oriented style sequencer in this case. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. But this is what I'm thinking now. I also might change uh, the units of time so that instead of seconds, it's um, like bars. And when I do snapping, which I'll definitely want to do, um, then I'll, yeah, probably have this snap to different bars. Might even make that switchable because it's not really that different. Um, considering I'll probably still have the storage all in seconds anyway. And then the snapping and the visuals here is all just going to be um, the only thing that changes, actually. Yeah, the, the looping, of course, won't happen on export. It's just meant for um, mainly like being able to sit here and loop a scene while tweaking a particle effect, for example, would be really, really useful. Uh, the other thing is that uh, I kind of have this, this concept of time that's sort of hacked in the tool right now. Uh, where I have our normal time variable, which is, of course, like the sequencer time. Um, but then there's another concept of time that I call test time, and that's just a uh, monotonically increasing time value that increases even when you're not actually playing anything. Mostly useful for just having time that increases for tests or for testing stuff out. But I think with a looping uh, section in the sequencer, we can cover both cases. Uh, and then I can sort of get rid of having two concepts of time. <clears throat> Which I would really like, because there are there are cases where like that time I actually have it loop every minute um, in order to just have it loop somewhere. Um, be nice to have a little more control over that. And yeah, I, th I just think that's a better all around solution. Hey tourist. But I think I think I'm not gonna worry about snapping. I think I'll do that later. It will just be an only editor concept. Um, we also have to start making clips. I might also just do the whole, I'm really just thinking to do the whole editor like as much as I can get away with in C++ before actually stuffing stuff down in the data model just to save me, save me some work while I need to iterate on some of the concepts a bit. Also, I'm not entirely sure how I want the zooming to be presented. Um, I'm really not sure about that. You know what, though? I think I might actually hook up the time here pretty quick just because I think it'd be useful to be able to scrub around like that. And maybe I'll do that now. So this shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Rather than the sequencer having current time, I'm just going to remove that. Move current time from here. And now we have to do a bunch of injection stuff. <clears throat> so currently, we need a couple things. I'm just going to copy this from another editor. Whoops, that was in the wrong file here. So this is the interface to the Rust stuff. This is uh, the way that I actually let other views, whoops, this is also wrong. Uh, let other views know um, that changes happened in the, in the context. And then there's a mutator that you can use to actually mutate stuff. Um, it's, it's still, it's called scene graph in this case, which is not entirely correct anymore. Um, but I think it's good enough for those names. Uh, and then need a couple more things here because we need scene graph and a mutator and I might even separate these interfaces even more but for now I think it's fine that I don't um, let me get some default values here I'll do this stuff think yeah 
Should be good. Um, yeah. Do current time. So this is going to need to, instead of setting the actual current time, Just called this mutator. Now, what do I want this interface to look like? We do actually want this to generate context updates in order for it to know that like the time has changed. Um, so we will want to do that stuff. Be paste. You can see it here. Nice and easy. Let's sequence our time actually just to make this a little more clear. And there's a few layers I have to go down here, which is not terrible because it's really straightforward at least, albeit a bit verbose. I did set sequence or time, didn't I? Yeah, uh, use that all the way down. <clears throat> okay, and then we're also gonna need to put another thing here. before the selection stuff. Actually, I don't know why I made a lot of these virtual. You know what I also should do? the mouse position here. Actually, what is the, might change how I do this. I just get the context here. That's actually fine, I think, rather than having the scene grab from the mutator. Because this is a little bit separate from that kind of information anyway. So I actually will do this. Um, do that. We'll go ahead and change all this stuff.
So I actually take this off of here. And what I'm actually gonna do here then is actually get the whole context. I don't like to take the whole context here. <clears throat> but I think it's gonna be okay. And in the main window, I need to actually feed in the context. I don't need hours. The reason I actually put that in there is to make the text symmetric. Um, I, I'll, I'll show you why in a sec. I don't think I need it, but it kind of feels nice to have it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll show you the kind of silly reason I did that once, I, once this builds again. And that'll be a minute. So I think we just do fill and double here. Maybe we, I don't remember the types here. Oh yeah, it's not gonna be one of those, is it? Let's do this for now. Oops. I think I'm changing my mind again. <laughs> uh, just in order for us to propagate these context updates, I really think we're going to need to do that. So I'm going to move that back. I can't imagine why I made these virtual. Oh, I totally know why. It's because because I do this through like I use multiple inheritance to simulate interfaces here. 
That makes sense, actually. Get the sequencer time, and then we need to set it down here. I already have that. Still have that here. Just for crunch. It's not difficult. A little bit tedious. Not difficult. So I'm totally using Rust. This is the, the C API to the Rust library. Also, hi, by the way. I'm actually going to do this here. And then I'm actually going to rename these to change. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I use, I use C++ and Qt for the very top layer of the tool. Everything else is Rust. Change this a bit. What's the spy? position. Uh, I'm not using Rust because Qt, um, Qt is very, very C++ e, and I don't want to use it through some bindings. Like maintaining this boundary to me really is not that difficult. It's, it's a lot of small things that are just super, super consistent. So it really isn't a burden to me. Um, other than being a little bit annoying when I have to add fields, but it also kind of restricts me to doing that very often, which is kind of nice. So just use Rust isn't really something I can do. The, someone is working on bindings, but uh, I'd rather use Qt directly than through bindings. Plus, I don't know how mature they are. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely using Qt. There's... Nothing else will do, frankly. <clears throat> there are also a couple of, like interfaces here that I could get away with not having. Um, but uh, I kind of like having them because it makes the code a little clearer in my mind. Although I have considered removing them for... Uh, just to reduce some code size. Hmm. 
I'm pretty sure not, Hunter. Yeah, so then <clears throat> in the sequencer itself, make sure that's yeah. I really like how this stuff reads. Like we get information from the scene graph and then we tell we tell the mutator to go change stuff. <clears throat> now because I added a context update, this is gonna have to bubble up a bit. But there's very good reasons why I have this architecture that I'm not gonna go into right now. Just uh, believe me when I say it definitely does us way more good than harm. I just want to have this on here. I think we just do this even. It's not even a model change, it's the context update. So that should make it Almost build.
Sometimes these are pretty long builds. Yeah, at least it doesn't need to clap. <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> so now, check that out. <laughs> That's so cool to see that work. Now, this is totally not attached to like the music player or anything. Um, uh, that's actually still attached to Rocket. So like if I play this, Although it's kind of funny because it doesn't update the time properly. That's funny. But I think that's okay to kind of just hobble it together like this. It's actually really sick. <laughs> Even just having this scrubbing like this. Kind of glad I did this this early. Um, now I actually want to open a different demo. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't hear the music anyway. I have my stuff muted. But, uh... Just a bit funny. So here, this is why we already need Zoom. This will be really cool. I'm gonna actually commit here. Yeah, zoom and scroll. I'm not really sure how I wanna define the length of the of the track yet either. Yeah, actually entering it's probably gonna be the easiest. Right now it's just, it'll, it's this wide and then I have a certain kind of scale that scales pixels to, um, pixels to time values and then I have like ticks that go by there. So it's it's really, right now it's just defined by how, um, how big this is. Like if I scroll way to the right, then it's fine. Got another screen over there, so that's actually helpful. <laughs> Um, the timeline itself actually has no max length because Rocket doesn't define that either. Um, it will have issues with the audio player if it goes too far, but that's just not really an issue. 
So I'll need that, and I'll need to be able to specify a music file at some point as well. So all, all these little things are going to be kind of special. Another thing that I'm thinking about doing, actually, is like to to just generate a bunch of test data. I'm actually thinking, thinking about converting the the rocket data that we have for these existing demos. Um, I won't do that today, but might do that. Also, the organization of that data may not be that nice, but we'll see. Yeah, floating time display would be cool. I'm also going to have a separate transport that will show the current time, like here and then with like play and stop buttons, which is kind of one of the reasons I wanted to get time hooked up so early, because it'd be really nice to have that and the looping and stuff done pretty soon. Snapping, I'll wait. I don't think it'll actually be that bad to do snapping. And I need to get all the data in there before I do snapping because you want to do like snapping to clip edges and stuff. I think that'll be a lot easier. <clears throat> so if I if I have it so you can just enter the time. Uh, the nice thing about that is that then I can I can sort of build the zoom and everything around that. Maybe that's easiest. Is I quite like, um, I don't think I'll zoom with the mouse wheel because I'm going to end up with a bunch of uh, vertically stacked tracks and I want to be able to have this scroll there. Um, one of the things that Live does actually is it has has an area above the timeline uh, where you can kind of see a little preview of the clips and you can uh, zoom around and scroll in there and that's pretty nice. And then it will just expand the available time depending on what you actually do with the clips. Um, but the, the zooming doesn't really matter because it's it's just in terms of bars and the length of the track doesn't really matter because that's just having more bars or not. I'm just having fun scrubbing this right now, though. <laughs> scrubbing this and thinking about it. Some of these like flickery motions and stuff just look way cheaper when you play in this slowly. <laughs> Just enjoying this. <laughs> um yeah, as if the demo weren't slow mo already. I'm allergic to motion that's too fast. So I'm fairly certain this is like redrawing all this stuff every time I scrub. It's kind of jank. And Gates doesn't have fast ha uh, have fast movement, like at all. <laughs> like there, there's a lot of small motions, but I feel like generally even Engage is is actually pretty slow in terms of the the motion, which is totally intentional. But yeah, I wouldn't call that fast. I think I'll I think I'll start uh doing the the transport now. Um Because then I can sort of have a little panel where I can place other things like, for example, setting the time or loading a font, uh, a, an audio file. And I think, I think it's the first test. We can just have it display the current time while scrubbing. 
I think that would be pretty nice. <laughs> Never scrubbed the demo like this before. It's, it's mesmerizing to me, <laughs> even having made it. This is just so not how he did it. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, speed control might be nice. Although I think you can kind of just simulate that with the mouse, which might be useful enough. <clears throat> we'll see. As I am, I am constantly thinking about like what is the minimal set of things that will that will actually be really useful here. I don't know if time control, like speed control, fits into that. Just because we can do that by hand, and the only the the reason uh, why I imagine it being most useful is in this case where it's like, oh, that animation looks weird, and then you kind of just play it slowly like this. It's arguably more useful just to only have it controlled by hand. This is what I'm thinking now. All right, time to move on. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna work on the transport. So we'll do it. I'm gonna fork the sequencer here because that'll be easy enough. And uh, the transport's going to have a lot of subviews on it. But I think it'll all fit together pretty naturally. are gonna want it to have a mutator as well because we're gonna we're gonna do play and stop that way and we need to propagate play and stop events so that certain views can just sit there and watch every frame uh for time change values this is how i think i'm gonna do that that we're not gonna worry about don't need any actual time values. Don't even know if we need paint. Considering I'm probably just going to make this a composite view of other views anyway. Don't think we really need this either. I think the main window needs to have one of these.
Yes, okay, so we're gonna do something similar to this. We're gonna make a layout here. And the sequencer is gonna have the scroll. This stuff is not actually. Okay, v VBox layout here. I always struggle a bit with this stuff. I think it'll more or less work that way. Might need to do some resizing stuff here. What did I do for the inspector? So there's some stuff in there. I'm not a cute expert if you couldn't tell. Right, so it should be relatively straightforward. Actually, we need an HBox layout. And first, I'm just going to add, add a label. Start with that, and then we'll update the time values after this. Whoops. Oh, you, Zakwar. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, let's start with that. And what I'm probably going to end up doing is having references to these just on the class and then updating these when we get changes. Not going to be too bad, I think. Oh yeah, didn't run QMake after changing the project file. <clears throat> oh, that was Includeception. Ha, ah, that's what you meant. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I had no idea what you meant when you said that. <laughs> now it makes sense. But I also didn't run QMake. No, that's fine, tourist. I just that's why I didn't respond to it earlier. I just didn't know. <laughs> that's cool. 
Cool. So this is the transport. Looks like it's placed more or less where I expected. So that's nice. So now I actually want to get it so that it displays the correct time. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. In fact, this is actually wrong. We don't actually need update. Uh, we're going to do something like this. I don't think we need Q label here. Too. Might separate this time formatting stuff as well at some point, but for now, I'll just copy some of this. Guess we'll do this. So I actually did need Q label here. Try to keep these low for compile time. Stuff adds up fast. That didn't work. <laughs> it's a bit odd, actually. Actually, I totally know what happened. We just never call this. <laughs> that would do it. Ah, you know what else? I think this is not propagating some stuff. There we go. It's going to make that this nice blue color.
This will be cheeky. Apparently that's how you do that. Well, that didn't work. There we go. <laughs> it's amazing when you get like three UI elements, <laughs> how the thing starts looking like a more proper tool. All right, I wanna adjust some things here for moving on too far. Also, I'm probably gonna go in like 15, 20 minutes. Just so you guys know. Yeah, so I had like no margin or anything on this inspector thing, which is, I actually think is quite all right. Let's do this. Oops. Just to make sure that gets set here. Let's just try that. That will probably fix the margins there that I didn't like. Yeah, that already did. I wanted it to line up here, more or less. Yeah, it seems to be correct. Cool. So the next kind of stuff I would want on here is stuff like play and pause buttons or play and stop is probably all I need. Play and stop and then a loop toggle. And then stuff like the length. I also want to set there. Might even do zoom there. Because I think, I think the easiest way to do zoom, it may not be the most user friendly, but I think it would work well enough. It's just to have a slider that'll be between like some min and max zoom that might be good enough. And then that would be something that would be easy to just put, put here. You know, I actually might head out now though. Cause I'm just thinking about how much work it's gonna be to get like play to work. Like what's the next thing I could do? And I'm thinking that setting up the thing to set the, set the length will be kind of annoying. <laughs> Doing the zoom will be kind of annoying. I might just put it off for now. Take off a little early. Enjoy my Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to do that, actually. But I'm pretty happy even with just this amount of progress today. Um, yesterday, I did mostly architectural stuff to prepare for this. And then today, 
did all the ticks and the scrubbing here. And already this is technically two separate views that are communicating about the time changing, which I'm also happy with. That's pretty rad. So I think, think I'll actually call it quits uh, now. But uh, thanks, guys, for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.